This section gives a brief introduction to computed properties. Computed properties are easily explained using this example. I have my C person, which has first name and last name. It also has a linked card. This will come in handy by the end of the tutorial. But for now, what I want to do is I want to introduce another property on my C person called full name. Obviously, this will be dependent on first and last names. Uframe allows you to easily get rid of any boilerplate code uh, when you got this kind of situation. Inside of my cPerson element, I will right click and add new computed property. I will name this one full name. And I can choose a type using this little tag here. In this case, it's going to be string. Notice though that computed properties are expressed or defined using standalone nodes, unlike scene properties and regular properties. Now I will express that it is dependent on first name and last name. For this, I will drag this output connector to the computed property. Same for the last name. Now I will save and compile. After the code is generated on your view model, you can override a method. It's called compute full name. I will remove the base invocation and return first name plus space plus last name. In my C person view, I will uncomment this line to display my full name. Now as you can see, if I start changing first name, the full name will be updated. And this is exactly how it works. Whenever dependent property is updated, the computed property gets a notification and is recalculated using the method defined in the view model. In this case, it's this one, compute full name. Uframe allows you to make your computed property dependent on the property of the child element. Like here, I have a link to the card since this is a, an element and we have a view model, I can drag it to the computed property, expand it and get this plus button here. If I click it, editor will allow me to choose from all the properties of the card. In this case, I only have ID, so I'm going to use this. Now I'm going to slightly change my computation method. I still have my full name, but whenever I get my card or whenever it's set, I also want to add my ID here. If we play this, you will see that we got three job rounds. This is because in the beginning, I have already assigned my card in the view model properties. So if I change my card ID now, the computed property on the person will be updated. If you really need to do some crazy things like multiple level dependency, you can still do it using the code itself. On your view model, once you define a computed property, you will get two methods. One of those is get dependence. In my case, it's get full name dependence because my computed property is named full name. Here, I have my base invocation, which returns all the dependencies expressed in the diagram, but you can also add your own here. And of course, you're responsible for keeping track of those. Also, on the view model, 
you always get a bind method where you can set up any events and observables and invoke reset full name. What this does is it reassigns all the dependence for this computed property and recalculates it. So for example, if I didn't have the ability to set up uh, one level dependency in my diagram, I could easily do it by resetting my full name computed property every time my card is changed. In this case, even if you change the card, it's going to work automatically for you. A computed can be dependent on regular properties, scene properties, and also it can be dependent on other computed. You just drag the output of your computed to the next computed property. Also, computed properties can serve as triggers for the state machines. You can learn more about state machines in the state machines tutorial.